Good morning and welcome to today's press conference on Bill C-233, the Sex Selective Abortion Act. MP Wagenthal, please. Good morning. I want to thank the members of the media who have taken the time to attend in person or virtually this morning. Before I begin my comments and answer your questions on Bill C-233, the Sex Selective Abortion Act, I would like to introduce and provide opportunity for two amazing women to deliver brief remarks in support of this bill. First of all, Dr. Williams, MD, is a family physician in Calgary, Alberta. She is the medical director of advanced primary care. She's involved in education at all levels of medical training and has presented at the United Nations in defense of human rights. Dr. Williams. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It is my pleasure to speak in support of MP Wagenthal's Bill C-233, an act to amend the criminal code on sex abortions. I support this bill as a woman, a mother, a physician, and a Canadian. Sex selective abortion is recognized by the United Nations as a form of gender-based violence. Death is universally accepted as the ultimate harm in gender-based violence. The UN has called female infanticide and prenatal sex selection harmful and unethical practices. In 2011, they released an interagency statement that called sex-selective abortions an unacceptable manifestation of gender discrimination against girls and women and a violation of their human rights. They called on member states to end this practice. Canada is over a decade late in responding to this monumental call to protect the right to life for women and girls. Currently, Canada is a country that allows physicians to terminate girls simply because they are girls. Worldwide, this has led to an estimated 140 to 160 million missing girls. In 2007, the Executive Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, the SOGC, issued a statement that medical technologies for the sole purpose of gender identification and pregnancy should not be used to accommodate societal preferences, and that the SOGC does not support the termination of pregnancy on the basis of gender. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, British Columbia, and Saskatchewan have also echoed the SOGC's view. This bill allows Canada to send a clear message that we oppose the idea that girls do not deserve to live simply because they are girls. All political parties must stand up for the equality of women and men. Having sex-selective abortions clearly defined in the criminal code as an unacceptable violation of the human rights of girls is critical in protecting women. It's very rare in politics when we are presented with a bill that all parties can support. There are no Canadian political parties who do not support a woman's right to life in Canada. The time to send this clear message is now. We must act before more female lives are lost. Thank you so much for your time. Next, I would like to introduce Tabitha Ewart from We Need a Law. She serves as their full-time legal counsel and is a member of ARPA's law and policy team in its Ottawa office. Tabitha. Thank you. Canada has a rich history of taking seriously the recognition of human rights, including the right to be treated equally regardless of sex. We know at times that we have failed, but part of the beauty of this country is that we will not shy away from self-reflection, asking how we ought to change the way we treat others, especially those without a voice. We work to correct injustices, and we strive to treasure each and every human being as having equal dignity and worth, not just through our words, but in fact. Parliament has the opportunity to do that by passing the Sex Selective Abortion Act. Sex-selective abortion is a blow to equality as it devalues the preborn child just based on her sex. And just as our law prohibits this type of discrimination in other areas, and as equality is enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, so our law should prohibit the discriminatory practice of sex-selective abortion. We cannot, as a country, claim to strive for equality 
if we're going to ignore discrimination that happens at the earliest stages of life. The fact that even one preborn child is aborted because of her sex flies in the face of our commitment to equality. The reality that this is indeed happening in Canada requires action. This is a Canadian problem and it requires a Canadian solution like the Sex Selective Abortion Act. I'm so thankful for MP Wagenthal's leadership on this issue, for her understanding that if our goal is equality between the sexes, that means standing up for all women, especially those who cannot speak for themselves. I'm thankful for her, abil her ability to identify this as a Canadian issue, something that we can rally around together. All Canadians can agree that it is wrong to abort a girl simply because she is a girl. And I am thankful for her ability to find a way to give our medical professionals a tool to say no to performing sex-selective abortions. I am honored to stand alongside MP Wagenthal today as she works to protect pre-born girls from being targeted based on their sex. This bill will go a long way to ending this injustice here in Canada, and it is an important step forward for our country. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha Ewart and Dr. Williams. I deeply appreciate your support this morning and for what you brought to the table. So over one year ago, I had the privilege of tabling my second private member's bill in as many terms as a member of parliament. I introduced C-233 in response to Canada's lack of a legal framework respecting sex-selective abortion to respond to the wishes of a clear majority of Canadians who would like to see it made illegal and to honour our core values as a country. Above all, I'm bringing this bill forward in defence of pre-born Canadian girls and boys who are aborted simply due to their sex. Sex-selective abortion is a persistent and overlooked form of gender inequality deserving urgent attention and a concerted legislative response. If enacted, C-233 would amend the Criminal Code of Canada to make it an offence for a medical practitioner to perform an abortion knowing that the abortion is sought solely on the grounds of the child's genetic sex. It would also require the Federal Minister of Health, in consultation with provincial counterparts responsible for health, to establish guidelines respecting information provided by a medical practitioner in relation to a request for an abortion. But why bring this legislation forward now? Because sex-selective abortion is happening in Canada, and because we have no law against it. Adopting appropriate legislation to end discrimination against any person based on sex is part of Canada's commitment to protecting human rights. While sex selection is already prohibited in the case of in vitro fertilization under the Assisted Human Rights Reproduction Act, no such prohibition exists for children in utero. In order to expand this protection to all preborn children, a criminal prohibition should be added to the criminal code. My bill addresses inequality between the sexes at the earliest stages of life. Canada is a country that values equality of the sexes, and sex-selective abortion inherently denies the equal value of boys and girls. If a baby girl is unwanted simply because she's a girl, I am pleased to say that most Canadians do not believe that abortion should be an option. Yes, a majority of Canadians desire continued access to abortion services in our country. However, the same public support cannot be found when it comes to sex-selective abortion. A 2019 Dart and Maru Blue poll conducted for the National Post found that 84% of Canadians believe it should be illegal to have an abortion if the family does not want the baby to be a certain sex. Clearly, Canadians have drawn a line in the sand. They do not desire to see, see sex selection abortion continue. As endorsements I've received from the Vedic, Hindu, and Sikh communities state, Canadians would like to see this reasonable limit implemented on behalf of preborn girls who may be aborted only due to their sex. The Canadian medical community has also been clear on their opposition to sex selective abortion and discouraged the practice. 
And as already stated by Dr. Williams, the executive of the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, SOGC, issued a statement that medical technologies for the sole purpose of gender identification in pregnancy should not be used to accommodate societal preferences and that the SOGC does not support termination of pregnancy on the basis of gender. And the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, as well as British Columbia and Saskatchewan, also echo these views. Clearly, these views, coupled with the views of the majority of Canadians, means that the time is right in Canada to bring the Sex Selective Abortion Act into law. Provincial medical colleges, however, do not make laws. As parliamentarians, I have been given the opportunity to act on behalf of the healthcare profession and the majority of Canadians. Canadians want to see the criminal code reflect Canada's values. They would like to see Canada take this important step to end this form of discrimination on the basis of sex. Sex selection is not permissible in a society that advocates for equality of the sexes. And that's why I'm humbled by this opportunity to debate C-233 in the House of Commons. Thank you, and I'd be pleased to take your questions. Thank you very much. We'll now start the question period. As usual, there'll be one question and one follow-up. Uh, please identify yourself before asking your question. Operator, can we please have the first question on the phone? Certainly, thank you. Please press star one if you have a question. Veuillez appuyer sur étoile maintenant pour poser une question. Notre première question est de Lina Dib de la Presse canadienne. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Ms. Wackenthal. Uh, your leader is holding a press conference at the same time, and he just said that he's going to be uh, voting against your bill, so I'd like to have your reaction to that. First of all, um, thank you for the question. And uh, I, I want to say that I am so privileged and humbled to be part of the Conservative Party of Canada and to be uh, playing a role within our government. In our party, uh, we are very specific to the fact that we have the privilege to present our private members' bills the way that they should be presented in the House. And that's why I've brought this forward today, because I want to represent what the majority of Canadians are concerned about. And along with that opportunity that we have uh, in our party to bring forward private members' bills, we also uh, uh, really enjoy the opportunity within our caucus to challenge each other and to debate absolutely everything uh, that comes before us. As well, we have the opportunity and the privilege to vote our conscience. So number one, that's why I uh, am very honored to be part of the, the uh, Conservative Party of Canada. And I respect my leader's uh, opportunity to make his choice as much as I do mine. And at this point in time, I will say that this bill reflects the views of the majority of Canadians and as well is reflected in absolutely every party uh, that sits within the House of Commons. Uh, there has been a poll done that uh, asked the very question, if this was part of your platform, would you support it? And specifically, uh, of course, our party had very strong support. The Liberals were over 50% at 51% of those who voted Liberal in 2019. And as well, the Bloc had 61%. So this bill is coming forward, not just uh, representing uh, Canadians in general. It's representing across the country and all political parties. Uh, yeah, so you say that you, you respect your leader's expression of his choice. At the same time, you're saying that the majority of Canadians want this. So are you saying that Mr. O'Toole is not attuned to what Canadians want on, on this particular issue? Is he, is he wrong? Is he, I don't know, you're not exactly reacting to his decision not, not, not to, to vote against your bill. And he won't say if his um, shadow cabinet will, uh, have to, will have a free vote or not. So as well, I would like to hear you on, on that, should they have a free vote. Um, my understanding is that we have a free vote on issues of conscience. Thank okay, you. and what and what uh, what about his decision to do something that you say is against what majority of Canadians want? Well, that's his decision, and and uh, I am really pleased. Actually, as I said, within our party, we have the freedom 
Uh, we have a big, broad tent, and I feel very welcome within my party and a significant opportunity that I have here to represent the majority of Canadians across our nation. As you know, Canada has absolutely no laws in regards to abortion, and sex-selective abortion is something that Canadians frown upon. And so I am honoured to be uh, presenting this bill in the House of Commons for debate and to have Canadians see that we as uh, their legislators are prepared to discuss issues that are important to them rather than simply within the realm of uh, our political agendas. And this is the opportunity that I think Canadians need to realize is significant when it comes to private members' bills. Thank you very much. Operator, next question, please. Thank you, merci. Notre prochaine question est de Hélène Buzetti, des Coop de l'Information. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Good morning, Ms. Ms. Wagenthal. Um, I just wanted to follow up. Mr. O'Toole has said in the past that he doesn't want to reopen the abortion debate. So I'm just wondering, considering that it, your leader did a press conference exactly at the same time as you're doing yours, um, were there any obstacles placed by him, his team, or the party in general uh, for you to hold this press conference or to table this bill? No. Okay. And, and, and also, what do you say to people who, who say that, because we know you're, you're pro-life, and some people see this kind of build as a tro Trojan horse. You start there because everybody agrees, but in fact, it's only a strategy to widen the prohibition on abortion. Is that your plan? No, that's not my plan. My plan is to represent Canadians across the nation on an issue that's very important to us. You know, as... as uh, Dr. Williams mentioned, Canada is a decade behind all other countries. We are the only democratic country in the world with absolutely no parameters on abortion. And sex-selective abortion came forward as a high priority of Canadians. 84% of them, when asked the question, do you believe that this should be an option when a family is simply having that abortion due to the sex of the child, legal or illegal? And 84% of Canadians indicated that it should be illegal. And I have attended a, a women's studies class at a college uh, to talk about being a woman in politics. And I had just tabled my bill. And all they wanted to do was talk about that because they were absolutely appalled to learn that Canada says we stand for human rights and equality between men and women. And yet sex selective abortion is allowed in Canada because there's no law. Thank you very much. I will have another question after. <laughs> uh, operator, next question, please. Thank you. Our next question is from Faisal Amin from City News, Toronto. Please go ahead, have la parole. Good morning. Um, there are organizations who are addressing this very same issue of sex-selective abortions here in the greater Toronto area and Canada. They say that this is an extreme measure um, that's taken rarely, and it fails to address the root causes of male biases. I'd like to get your response to that. Yes, I understand there are those who don't even want to see the parameter of sex-selective abortion on abortion, which means that uh, those groups are fine with aborting a baby girl simply because she's a girl. The truth of the matter is this is an issue that 84% of Canadians are are rallying around and saying that this is something that should be reflected in our criminal code. So there is a certain percentage, obviously, if 84% of Canadians agree with this, there is a fringe group that are pro-abortion to the point where there should be no parameters, even in regards to choosing to have an abortion simply because you do not want that child that is a baby girl or occasionally, truthfully, a baby boy. And that is not reflective of the values of Canada or the values of the majority of Canadians. I'd like to also be clear that these are actually organizations who've conducted research and are in communication with um, members of the community who say, and they've seen firsthand through data, that legislative bans that have been uh, attempted 
they don't work. So I'm just curious to see what communication or consultations you've had with organizations who are actually doing this work on the ground um, and and have you consulted with them before that? Do you have their support? And what do you say when the data and their work shows that these legislative bans don't work, that they're actually um, uh, a, 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 another form of not addressing uh, the, the root cause of this issue? Well, the Canadian Medical Association has done studies uh, in 2012 and 2016 uh, with various groups, uh, ethnic uh, researchers as well as within the ethnic community. In Canada, there's no recording of any uh, information around abortion, so it's extrapolated based on populations. And so there, the Canadian Medical Association has indicated in response to these articles that have been peer-reviewed in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, that this is a growing problem in Canada. I am the first to say that there are many, many other countries that do have laws in this regard, and it is difficult, especially within certain cultural societies, to make those changes. But we have a responsibility in Canada to say uh, what our values are and to say it through our laws. And so it is important to us as Canadians, in response to the desire of Canadians, to bring forward a law that says that sex-selective abortion is not acceptable in Canada. Thank you very much. We have time for two more questions. Operator, next question, please. Thank you. Our next question, the question is from Melanie Marquis of La Presse. Have you the floor? Please go ahead. Merci. Uh, good morning. Um, I was speaking yesterday with a conservative uh, strategist, Yann Plan, and he was basically saying uh, every time an MP brings uh, forward uh, the abortion debate that it impedes on the uh, well, it ruins the conservatives' uh, chance for the next election. And we saw with uh, Mr. Scheer how difficult an issue that was for him. What do you answer to this uh, criticism that you're kind of uh, not helpful to your leader getting reelected or, or elected? Sorry. Yeah, reelected would be wonderful. Um, Truth of the matter is, I, I want to quote what the Minister of Justice has uh, written. Every time a, a petition has been presented in the House indicating a desire of Canadians to have this issue dealt with and a sex-selective abortion law put in place, the Minister of Justice is required to respond to that petition. And here is what uh, the, uh, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, the Honourable David Lametti, has written in response to those petitions. The government of Canada condemns all practices that are motivated by discriminatory views of women and girls, including sex-selective practices. So the perspective here, from my understanding, is that they agree that this is an inappropriate uh, response when a, a family does not want to have a baby girl and chooses to have an abortion based solely on that reason. So there is ample reason across this country from the majority of Canadians to bring this law into effect. And it reflects, as I had mentioned, from uh, the poll done. And all of this information is available uh, on my website, kathywagenthal.ca. But a poll done by One Persuades, they said in the question, according to the Canadian Medical Association Journal, the practice of sex-selective abortion, where female fetuses are aborted for the primary reason that they are female and not male, occurs in Canada today. Yet no law exists to restrict this practice. Would you be more likely to vote for a political party that promised to legally restrict sex-selective abortion in Canada? Among the results, it was found that 52% of Canadians would be moderately to much more likely to vote for a political party that promised to legally restrict sex-selective abortion. 58% of Conservatives, 56% of those with a postgraduate degree, 51% of those who voted Liberal, and 61% of those who voted for the Bloc. Clearly this issue is supported across all political party platforms and amongst Canadians. Okay, and so just to make it clear, you're saying, no, I'm not... Uh being unhelpful to my leader. And in the same vein, um, what kind of support does the bill have within conservative, 
liberal NDP and bloc ranks? Have you approached some MPs to make sure it would pass and go to committee? Well, first of all, my responsibility as a member of Parliament is to be here on behalf of my constituents and on behalf of Canadians. And with a private member's bill, I have an opportunity that I'm so grateful is there to bring forward something that is seen as an issue across the country. Clearly, uh, this particular topic has been used as a sword, has been uh, misrepresented, quite honestly, across the nation. And this poll that was uh, created uh, by the National Post indicates and proves that Canadians are not polarized on this issue as much as some of the media and political agendas would like to say. So I'm really pleased to be sitting here today on behalf of Canadians speaking to sex-selective abortion, an issue that flies in the face of valuing men and women, boys and girls, equally in this country. We can't say one thing internationally and puff ourselves up and yet not support legal, uh, a law that makes sex-selective abortion in Canada illegal. Thank you very much, MP Wagenthal, Ms. Ewart, Dr. Williams, and the media for attending this morning. This concludes the press conference. Thank you.